We were discussing the ordination of women. The bishop asked me what I thought. Should women take the services? So long as it doesn't have to be me, I wanted to say. They can be taken by a trained gorilla. Oh yes, Jeffrey chips in. Susan's all in favour. She is keener than I am. Aren't you, darling? More sprouts, anybody, I said. Bit of the young side for a bishop. But he's been a prominent sportsman at university, so that would explain it. Boxing or rugby. Broken nose at some stage, anyway. One of the Christianity's common sense brigade. Hobbies, bricklaying, apparently. And refers to me throughout as Mrs. Vicar. Wants beer with his lunch. And Geoffrey says he'll join him, so this leaves me with the wine. Geoffrey's all over him, because rumour has it he's shopping round for a new archdeacon. Asks Jeff how outgoing I am. Actually says that. How outgoing is Mrs. Vicker? Mr. Vicker jumps in with a quick rundown of my accomplishments and an outline of my punishing schedule. On a typical day, apparently, I kick off by changing the wheel on the fiesta and hasten to the bedside of a dying pensioner. After which, having done the altar flowers and dispensed warmth and appreciation to sundry parishioners en route, I top off a thrill-packed morning by taking round meals and wheels. Somehow, and this to me is the miracle, says Geoffrey, somehow managing to rustle up a delicious lunch in the interim. The miracle somewhat belied by the flabby lasagna we are currently embarked on. The ladies, says the bishop, where would we be without them? Disaster strikes as I'm doling out the tinned peaches. The jug into which I've decanted the carnation milk gets knocked over, possibly by me. Geoffrey, for whom turning the other cheek is part of the job, insists it caught his elbow. And his lordship takes the same line, insisting he gets doused in carnation milk practically every day of his life. Still, when I get a dishcloth and sponge off his gaiters, I catch him giving me a funny look. It's Mary Magdalene and the Nivea cream all over again. After lunch, Geoffrey is supposed to be taking you on a tour of the parish. But while we're having a cup of instant, he claps his hand to his temple because he's suddenly remembered he's supposed to be in Keithley, blessing a steam engine. We are stacking the dishwasher. And I ask Geoffrey how he thinks it's gone. Doesn't know. Fingers crossed, I say. I think there are more constructive things we could do than that, he says crisply goes off to mend his inner tube. I sit by the agar for a bit. And as I doze off, it comes to me that by constructive things, he perhaps means prayer. When I wake up, there's a note from Geoffrey. Gone to talk to the lady's bright hour. Go to bed. I'm not sleepy. And anyway, we're running low on sherry. So I drive into Leeds. I've stopped going round the corner now, as I hold him a bit on the side, and she's always so surly. There's a little Indian shop I found at the back of the infirmary. It's a newsagent, basically, and it sells drink and anything, really, the way they do. Open last thing at night, Sundays included. My ideal. Ramesh, he's called. Mr. Ramesh, I call him. Though Ramesh may be his Christian name. Only not Christian, of course. I've been there once or twice now. Only this time, he sits me in the back place on a sack of something and talks. A little statuette of a god on the wall. Our god. Not the God, not the definite article. 
More than several thousand, apparently. Safety in numbers, I said. But he didn't understand. He shows me pictures of other gods getting up to all sorts. I said, she looks a very busy lady. Is that yoga? Well, he said, it helps. He's quite athletic himself, apparently. Married, but his wife's only about 14, so they won't let her in. He calls me Mrs. Vicar too. Only it's different. He's lovely teeth. 